the best value gaming CPU in 2025, it's the Ryzen 7600X and Ryzen 7600. But getting the right graphics card, motherboard, and RAM, it can be confusing. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This 2025 Ryzen 7600X PC build guide will cover everything that you need to know for the best Ryzen 7600X build, including the best graphics card for the Ryzen 7600X, the best RAM for the Ryzen 7600X, the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7600X, and more. And we'll give you specific build templates for both a maximum value Ryzen 7600X build and a premium Ryzen 7600X gaming PC build. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like so it really helps out the channel, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about the Ryzen 7600X versus Ryzen 7600 versus the Ryzen 7500F, the 7400F, and the Ryzen 9600X. Which one should you get in 2025? Basically, these CPUs, they're incredibly similar, especially the 7600 and 7600X. We just want the best value. I don't like the Ryzen 7400F. It uses thermal paste under its IHS rather than traditional solder, and that means it runs extremely hot. You might even have to deal with the CPU in the future to change the paste. That's a huge no for me. The Ryzen 7500F, not really available in the US, but if you're outside the US and you find it for a good deal, it's just a bit slower than the Ryzen 7600. There's virtually no difference between the Ryzen 7600 and 7600X with Precision Boost Overdrive enabled in the BIOS, which is what I recommend. So get whichever's cheaper. And if you're using a higher end GPU, the Ryzen 9600X can be up to 5% faster than the Ryzen 7600X while maintaining similar thermals. So you definitely can consider the 9600X if it's just a little bit more. So what's the best graphics card for the Ryzen 7600X in 2025? Remember that we get the most FPS in a gaming PC build when we get the fastest GPU we can afford, then just get a CPU that's not going to bottleneck it. We go through this in detail in our best CPU and GPU combo 2025 video. So check that out for a deeper dive as to why. The Ryzen 7600 is a great choice for mid-range CPUs that would otherwise be bottlenecked on a more budget tier CPU like a Ryzen 5600X. The lowest GPU I would recommend for the Ryzen 7600, it's the upcoming NVIDIA RTX 5060 or RTX 4060, if you can still find one of those, and the upcoming AMD Radeon RX 9060 or RX 7600, if that's still available. On the Intel side, I'd go as low as an Intel Arc B570 any lower power GPU, and I'd recommend considering dropping down to a lower tier of gaming CPU, like the Ryzen 5600X or the i5-12400, then putting that savings into buying a bigger GPU. While the Ryzen 7600 is fast enough for GPUs up to the Radeon RX 9070 XT, or even the RTX 5070 Ti, the CPU does start to become a bottleneck. If possible, I'd recommend moving up to the Ryzen 9700X or even 9800X 3D for high-end GPUs, like the RTX 5080 and RTX 5090, to get the full performance. But the Ryzen 7600 should be incredible value for any GPU between like the Intel Arc B580, the Radeon RX 9060 XT and RX 9070, and the NVIDIA RTX 5060 Ti or RTX 5070. And if playing primarily at higher resolutions, the Ryzen 7600X should be good for builds with an RTX 5070 Ti or Radeon RX 9070 XT. In our build, we went with the ASRock RX 9070 Steel Legend sent over by ASRock, so big thank you to ASRock. This GPU is a Max OC model running at 245 watt TDP. It looks amazing in our white build, and I absolutely love it. it has a separate ARGB cable connection so you can offload the ARGB to your motherboard instead of needing to download ASRock software. The only problem, of course, it doesn't actually come with a cable, so I'll leave one link down in the video description for about $7. What's the best RAM for the Ryzen 7600X and 2025? Now, you can check out our best RAM for gaming 2025 video for a deeper dive. But in a nutshell, you want DDR5 6000 CL30 RAM in a 2 by 16 gigabyte kit, so 32 gigabytes total. And you want to make sure to enable the XMP or Expo one-click auto overclocking profile in the BIOS to get the full rated speed. You do not want to exceed 6000 speed because the Ryzen memory controller just can't handle it and it will run at a less optimal two to one ratio. And you don't want slower than 6000 speed because it does not save you any money and it can cost you a little bit of performance. While there are now DDR5 6000 kits with tighter cast latency, those are CL28 and CL26 kits. These are about 30 to $80 more expensive. At that point, you get more performance by moving up a CPU tier instead. But obviously, if they're the same price, feel free to get the tighter timing kits. 
For the total amount of RAM, there are now some 16 gigabyte kits out there, but you're only gonna save like 10 bucks, so I just ignore those. And there is zero reason for budget to mid-range gamers to get more than 32 gigabytes of RAM. Don't waste your money on 64 gigabyte kits or larger. Great value kits in the US right now include non-RGB Patriot Viper in a steel finish for just $80 and Silicon Power and Team Group kits with cheaper and more basic looking heat spreaders. For RGB kits, they start around $90, including the Team Group T-Force Delta RGB RGB, Corsair Vengeance, G-Skill M5 Ripjaws, and others. I'll include a number of kits linked in the video description for you to check out. In our build, we went with the Silicon Power X Power 32 gigabyte kit with RGB for just $93. So what's the best motherboard for the Ryzen 7600X and 7600 in 2025? We've got an entire video on the best motherboard for Ryzen in 2025, so I'll leave that link down in the video description in our How to Build a PC playlist for more information. Ryzen 7600 gaming PC builds are all about value, so we want a B-series motherboard, specifically a B650, B650E, or B850 motherboard. The A620 and B840 motherboards lack Precision Boost Overdrive. That's AMD's one-click auto overclocking feature. And we want to enable this in the BIOS for the best performance, so we want to avoid those motherboards. X-Series motherboards are way too expensive and do not have any additional gaming features, so we're going to eliminate those as well. Now you might be wondering whether you need to spend extra to get a motherboard with a PCIe Gen 5 GPU slot. The answer, it's a pretty solid no in this budget class. Even an RTX 5090 runs just fine on PCIe Gen 4 GPU slots on a B650 motherboard, and that will likely be the case for the RTX 6090, possibly even the RTX 7090. So budget and mid-range gamers should not spend extra to get this feature. Invest in your GPU, storage, cooler, or anything else. Just to be clear, I'm not saying avoid this feature, just don't spend anything extra for it. For gamers, the main motherboard features that you want to focus on are whether you want two or three M.2 NVMe SSD slots on the motherboard, how much rear panel USB connectivity you need, whether you want Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to come with the board, you can of course add this in later, whether the board comes with basic or upgraded audio, and of course the quality and looks. All of my picks are linked down in the video description, so check those out for current pricing and availability in your region. Right now, value picks start at $110 to $140 in the US and include basic audio, two to three M.2 slots, decent but not amazing VRMs, and solid but not amazing rear panel USB connectivity. My first pick just received a big price cut, hopefully it stays at this price. The ASRock B850M Pro-A is $109 for non-Wi-Fi and $119 for the Wi-Fi version. It's got good VRMs, which could easily take a future X3D CPU upgrade like a 9800X3D. It's got three M.2 slots at the full bandwidth, which is really amazing. It's got four high-speed USB ports and four USB 2.0 ports, so good connectivity, and nice budget black styling along with PCIe Gen 5 GPU slots. My previous pick is the ASRock B850M-X, which is currently the same price. It's a very similar board. It's got two M.2s instead of three, cuts down two of the USB 2.0 ports off along with a slightly weaker, but still good VRM, and has a PCIe Gen 4 GPU slot. Moving up in price, I still like the ASRock B650M-A Pro RS Wi-Fi for $139, with very similar features to the other boards, along with PCIe Gen 4 GPU slot and built-in rear I.O. shield. And that's a motherboard that we use for our build. Another great motherboard is ASUS Tough B650M-E with two M.2 slots, a good VRM, four high-speed USB ports, and four USB 2.0 ports, along with great black styling and a built-in rear I.O. shield. And at $149, the MSI Pro B650M-A Wi-Fi it's another good option with a huge amount of rear panel USB connectivity, two M.2 NVMe SSD slots, Wi-Fi, a rock solid VRM, and great styling. You can also consider the Gigabyte B650M Gaming Plus Wi-Fi at $139, but at that price, it's got a little worse features than similarly priced motherboards. For value ATX sized motherboards, you can consider the MSI B650-S for about $130, although the VRMs are a little bit on the weaker side, but certainly it's good enough for a future upgrade to an eight core X3D VCAS CPU and eight high-speed USB ports, including a Type-C, though honestly, it's never been my personal favorite in terms of looks. The MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi typically sells for about $150, Though right now it's a little bit more expensive than that. And this is a better version of the Dash S board with better styling and a much improved VRM. The ASRock B850 Pro Dash A, it's also a decent value at $160 with six high-speed USB ports, including two Type-C ports, 
and six additional USB 2.0 ports, along with three M.2 NVMe drives and nice, if basic, black styling along with a PCIe Gen 5 GPU slot. For premium motherboards, we're looking for three full bandwidth M.2 drives with at least two having heat sinks, built-in rear I.O. plate with good USB connectivity, upgraded audio codec to ALC 1200, 1220, or 4080, strong VRMs, and we want it to look great. My top value pick for premium motherboards continues to be the ASUS TUF B650 Dash Plus for $169 with four high-speed USB ports, including two Type-C, and four USB 2.0 ports, three M.2 SSD slots, all with heat sinks, along with ALC 1200 audio upgrade, and a PCIe Gen 4 GPU slot. You can also consider the MSI B650 Tomahawk for about $10 to $20 more with its matte black styling, eight high-speed USB ports, including a Type-C, along with two USB 2.0 ports, and ALC 4080 audio, along with a PCIe Gen 4 GPU slot. If you do want a premium motherboard that also has a PCIe Gen 5 GPU slot, again, not something I recommend, but it's your money, check out the ASRock B850 Live Mixer with its insane six high-speed USB ports and eight additional USB 2.0 ports, just a ton of USB ports. It also has upgraded ALC 1220 audio, three full band with M.2 SSD slots with heat spreaders, very sharp styling, and like most of the premium 800 series motherboards, rocks Wi-Fi 7 for $189 or the currently $199 ASUS TUF B850 Dash Plus or the MSI B850 Dash Tomahawk, which are also loaded with features and great black styling, good rear panel USB connectivity, and Wi-Fi 7. I'll leave these and more options linked down in the video description. So what's the best CPU cooler for the Ryzen 7600X? Well, for any of the Ryzen 5 CPUs that we're looking at, the 7500F, 7600, 7600X, or the 9600X, we wanna make sure that we enable Precision Boost Overdrive in the BIOS to get the best performance. This is gonna require a budget tower air cooler for between $20 and $40. And you can choose anything from one of the many Thermalrite Assassin coolers for right around $20 to the Cooler Master Hyper 212 or Halo versions to the cooler that we use, the id Cooling SE214 XT in white for $18. These tower air coolers are more than enough with proper airflow, particularly if we're mostly gaming where CPU temps just aren't gonna get that hot. I think that these coolers all look great, but if you do wanna go with a liquid AIO, I'd recommend a 240 millimeter budget one. And there's plenty right now available for as little as $45. Let the Thermal Take Aqua Elite V3 or V4 for around $45, Vetro V240 for $60, or id Cooling Frost Flow for $50. I'll leave links to these coolers and some other suggestions down in the video description. Let's talk about the best SSD for the Ryzen 7600X. Now, if you haven't had a chance to watch our best SSD for gaming 2025 video, it's linked down in the video description under our how to build a PC playlist if you want a deeper dive. Basically, there is no gaming benefit from using anything faster than even a SATA SSD. But of course, Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMe SSDs are equally cheap, they're faster for other workloads, and they're super easy to install. And Gen 5 NVMe SSDs continue to be massively overpriced and a waste of your money. For budget-focused builds, the Silicon Power UD90, Team Group G50, or Western Digital SN580, those are great drives that we've recommended in the past. For more premium builds, looking to add a DRAM cache to make their SSD a little snappier when doing things like file copies and game installs, consider grabbing a drive like the Clevcraft C930, Team Group G70 Pro, or the Acer Predator GM7000. Right now, two terabyte drives are the best price per terabyte, followed closely by four terabyte models for those looking for even more storage. And this is not 2015 anymore. You do not need a separate drive for your operating system. A single large capacity drive is absolutely fine to save money. I do recommend at least one terabyte NVMe SSD storage in 2025, and I will leave several SSDs linked down in the video description for you to check out. For the PC case, what we want here, good airflow, but we really don't want to overspend too much. And we want it to look great too if we can. Ideally, we want at least two intake and one exhaust fan. Although more airflow, it's always better. Great budget options can be had for as little as about $60 right now, starting with the micro ATX case options like the Okonos Aqua 3 that we used in our build, offered in black or white RGB, and now with a no RGB version that's about five bucks cheaper, it has a stunning atrium style case with two glass panels and a minimal footprint. The three ARGB fans are set up in a unique negative pressure exhaust airflow system using the bottom mesh to intercept dust. But if you don't like that, you can just spin the top fans around for intake instead. It was super easy to build in and super cheap. 
I also like the Thermaltake View 170TG, which is very similar, but offers more fan mounting options for a similar price, along with the similar Okonos Aqua 5. There are also classically styled Bitphoenix Nova Mesh Micro ATX case in white or black that we've used many times, around $60, and the Sama Q5 with a similar setup. It's also popular for about the same price. For ATX size cases, if you do go with an ATX size motherboard, the Thermaltake View 270 ATX size version, it's great for about $70, as is the Fantex XT Ultra at about the same price. All these are linked down in the video description and I'll throw in some others for you to check out. So what power supply or PSU do you need? If you haven't seen our how to buy a PSU 2025 guide, we cover how to size and buy the best unit for your build based on unit quality rather than the nonsensical 80 plus ratings. I'll leave a link to that below. Basically, I take the rated power draw and PC part picker of all the components and I multiply that by 1.5 to get the minimum wattage. Because the Ryzen 7600 is so power efficient, many builds will not require more than 550 to 750 watts using this formula. For more value focused builds around a thousand dollar price point, I think a unit rated in the C tier on the SPL PSU tier list, probably fine, like the MSI A650BN that we use or A750BN. But if you can, then I'd spend just a little bit more on a B or A tier rated unit like the Corsair RME lineup. I put together two Ryzen 7600X gaming PC build templates to get you started. The first is a value build that uses the Ryzen 7600, currently at $199, with a budget tower air cooler, value focused B650 micro ATX size motherboard, DDR5 6000 CL30 non RGB RAM, a one terabyte budget NVMe SSD, a value micro ATX PC case, and the same C tier rated budget MSI 650 watt PSU. Not including the GPU, that build comes in at just under $600. For a more premium build that doesn't stray too far from value, I've switched the cooler to a reasonably priced 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler with RGB. I've upgraded the motherboard to an ATX size premium model, gone with RGB on the RAM at the same speed, went with a Gen 4 SSD with DRAM, added in an ATX size atrium style case, and a B tier 650 watt PSU. The upgraded build without the GPU comes in right around $750. Obviously, if you want, you can spend more, but those templates should get you started, and I will leave both of them linked down in the video description for you to check out, along with alternative parts. Remember to check out everything linked down in the video description for current pricing and availability in your region and our how to build a PC playlist. That includes our guide on how to actually build a PC and of course, how to set up your PC after you build, along with buying guides with for RAM, Ryzen motherboards, and others. If you get value out of this video, please give a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. And we'll catch you on the next one.